All right, it's Devlog Thursday. Now, it's been a while since the last Devlog Thursday, seven days to be exact, and in that time, I've started working on a new project. Actually, I started working on it the day after the last Devlog Thursday because I thought, hey, this would be a cool thing to work on on the side while I'm working on space farming. But this particular program, which is a music sequencer, is actually a really big undertaking, so... I think it's space farming that's going to get pushed to the side. If you don't know what a music sequencer is, it's basically a program where you create music by sequencing things like notes and events and effects on a timeline. And usually for something like a a tracker program, it's done vertically and with numbers, but this is horizontal and uses little tabs. I don't really know what to compare it to. I think... I think FL Studio is like that, but I've only used it once, and it was on a friend's computer. And he doesn't even have it anymore, so... Oh well. Anyway, I'll just go into a little bit of explaining what you see here. On the left, of course, you can see this keyboard, and it's really there, one, for visual effect, and two, so I can actually see what notes I'm putting on this timeline. And... The keys will light up with the color of the tabs, and they'll actually have the appropriate shading, even though they're just sprites, and that's one of the things that took a really long time to get right, but I'm really proud of it. And of course, all these little red rectangles are the notes, and the shorter ones correspond to the black notes, and the wider ones correspond to the white notes. And you can see that there's these subdivisions. Right now, if I press 1, then you can see that it's subdivided by note. And these darker, or actually brighter lines, are where the measures are. And the ones going horizontally are where the octaves are. And I can subdivide it into, um, see, this is quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, thirty-second notes. And then it starts dividing into triplets. So these are quarter note triplets, eighth note triplets, sixteenth note triplets, and that's all. So as you can see, this is made up of triplets, because it's swing. And I'll play the track for you in just a moment, but I'm going to finish explaining what else is on screen. At the very bottom, these are the notes that you can put in, and these two things are their variants. You can put in dotted notes, or you can put in triplets. And I think I'll do staccato soon, but the thing is, with the way it... Whenever you click on a note, the way it detects which note it is, is it takes the length and transforms that into a note, so... If you made a staccato quarter note and you picked it up after you placed it down, then you'd just get a regular eighth note. And maybe that's okay, but I don't know. And these numbers up here, the 0 out of 16, that's how many audio sources are being used. I'll get to that when I explain how the program actually works. And the N represents the um, last note that is loaded. And it's 22 right now because I was just playing it just a minute ago. But it starts at around 16 because it fills up all of these um, sor- audio sources. And then it keeps going up as more notes are loaded. And notes that have already been played are unloaded. But again, I'll explain that later. I'll first go ahead and play it. The last time I recorded this devlog, I didn't like it. But it seemed like, for some reason, there was a delay between the sound coming out of the program and the sound of the microphone and the actual visuals on screen. And it's not like that in the actual program, and I don't know if it's going to do it again, but I won't know until I watch the video. Anyway, here it is. Alright, so that is from a song that I was working on a little while back, and I think it's finished. Not sure when I'm going to upload it. I planned to upload a lot of stuff last weekend, but of course that didn't happen because I was working on this. And so I guess now I'll go ahead and explain how the program works. And I'll start with this 0 of 16 thing. If I go into the hierarchy, you can see that under the main camera, there are all these objects here, and these are all audio sources. And you can see that they have different clips, and the number corresponds to at least what I believe to be the MIDI note that marks the center of the range of that particular sample. So 
MIDI note 64, which is four notes or semitones above middle C, I think. And this one's for a much higher note, and that one's for a lower note, because, you know, the different notes have different qualities. And, of course, you can see the pitch right here it corresponds to, you know, what frequency that should play at. So we've got, okay, we had a C somewhere. Where was the C? Right there. You can see that that is definitely a C. I mean, even though that says 56, that means, like I said, that's the note that that particular sample is anchored around. And the way it works is whenever you first click play, it starts from either the beginning or wherever you have your cursor at, your little, I'll show you, this. It starts wherever this is. And it loads the first 16 notes it finds. And it schedules those notes using audio source dot play scheduled and also scheduled schedules their end time using audio source dot set scheduled end time. And yeah, it makes it definitely makes use of the audio settings dot DSP time variable. That's what it uses to keep track of time. Because trying to use the frame rate is not good at all, because that's never consistent. And it's also too slow for music. And the way it works is after a note has finished playing, which means not only has it ended, its release has tapered out so that it's actually not making any noise, it sets that audio source that that note is coming from to not allocated so that it can be allocated again. And it's constantly inside the update loop checking for... It also keeps track of um, the last note that it played. And, or actually the last loaded note that finished. So it can constantly refill up those 16 samples with as many notes as possible. And that... Oh, okay, I just got a notification that was really loud, sorry. Basically what that translates to is 16 note polyphony. If you don't know what that means, that means up to 16 notes can be playing at the same time. If 16 notes are actually sounding, then no more notes can start sounding during that time until finally the 16th note has stopped playing. Then new notes can come in one at a time, one for each note that finishes playing. And so far, in normal use, even with this really complicated melody, that hasn't happened. There's never been a time where it needs to play more than 16 notes at once. But as it gets more complicated, and if I decide to use the same set of 16 notes for multiple channels, then, which are tracks, they're kind of like instruments, usually, then I might have to consider either expanding the number of voices, which is the technical term for, the, for these audio sources, or finding some other way to work around it. But so far, it seems fine, and hopefully if the recording didn't cause it to be slow, which it didn't last time, then you heard that it played perfectly, flawlessly. You probably didn't hear any, like, out of syncness at all. So it works great right now. I even have a really low-end computer. It's only got 4 gigabytes of RAM, and I don't remember what the clock speed is for the processor. Um, I think it was 2 gigahertz, I think. So yeah, this thing, even on my low-end system, is working great. And that's also with OBS running and recording it. So, yeah, that's what I'm working on. That's how it works. And thanks for watching. Um, I'm probably still going to be working on this by next Thursday. I mean, I'm probably going to be working on this for a long time. I've got a lot of plans for this. So, about space farming, I don't know. I mean, I just kind of felt like making a program that'll help me make music is a little bit more important than farming in space, but I don't know. That's just me. Anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.